tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello friends, I created this scene, which is pretty simple, for a tutorial about mesh lights, that, that is M-A-S-H, because currently we have I think 25 lights in the scene and they are mesh lights. It uh, sounds complicated but it really isn't. Uh, anyway you can check this out. Uh, we don't build a scene from scratch today because we need a complex scene today for rendering tasks and this is quite a complex scene with all the lights. And the lights by the way they from time to time with the signal node as it's called penetrate the ground. They leave black parts in the, on the in the surface uh, and uh, well it's a lot of light in this scene so let's get a little bit closer to her and change the render settings I use this tab here and uh, I use instead of HD 2720 I use 1080 so this is the HD resolution and I position her here and now I create a render process. Uh, Arnold render. Arnold needs to collect first, uh, needs to collect the textures of this character. Uh, the character was by the way uh, designed and rigged by the render people in Cologne. This is exactly where I live. And once this collecting process is done, it actually starts rendering. So it uh, runs up once only in the in the whole render process when you render a sequence it does this only once and then it actually renders so we see a white window first so let's be patient anti-aliasing of AA3 now you have quite a lot of grain here as you see it's uh, Arnold is cleaning up the scene already and there is quite quite a lot of grain here. The rendering is at 90% now. Now it's finished, it's 23 seconds for rendering. And when we go to one by one, we see the original size and we do have a lot of grain here. Um, we can get rid of the grain by raising the anti-aliasing value. This is very costly in t terms of rendering time. When you render only one frame, this is not a problem at all. 23 seconds or 2 minutes is not a problem, but when you render a sequence of a thousand frames, this is certainly a problem. So let's raise this to 6 and have a look at the grain as it is now, under 23 seconds, and how Arnold renders it now. So you see that it's cleaning up pixels much slower and there's much less grain. It's actually a quite, quite beautiful render. No depth of field here. I could introduce depth of field, but the rendering would take even longer. I think it takes about four times as long. It's still at 50% because it's cleaning up pixels at the border of the scene. And once it's done, we see the time for the rendering process down here. one minute and 13 seconds so it's about four times longer this tutorial is giving you a hint windows settings preferences plugin manager and here you type in mto and you see mtoa that is maya to arnold mll that's the mel script and you need to load it you need to install it the current plugin and uh, I have my 2022 in the educational version. And uh, when you click here on the I, you see that it's the plugin version 5. Arnold currently is in version 7, I think. 
but the plugin version is 5. And with the plugin version of 5, you have certain extras which are really nice. Now I go back to 3. So we see a lot of grain. And you actually, when you render a sequence, you need to find a balance for this. How many anti-aliasing <laughs> points you want to invest. If you don't see this part here, click on the wheel. Arnold is rendering and it's finished at 19 seconds. Now this is the interesting part and this is where we have new things. Add Imager. We add an Imager and I did a tutorial about the Lens Effects Imager for example and uh, I'll do it again just to show you what this is basically about. It adds a post effect to the image, the currently rendered image. So it's rendering the image again and here I have the vignette and here I have the bloom. The bloom of course extends the brightness of light and I can give it a tint etc. But that's old school, we've used this already. So here I go to the strength of the bloom. Pretty obvious. The light part of her jacket are much brighter and the vignette of course is the vignette. And uh, when you render a sequence with these things, with these settings, this will be applied to every single frame, which is just fine. We remove this imager because we are interested in two new images which deal with denoising. I go to one to one and we see how much grain we do have here. Now uh, the new den denoises are called noise with a C and OIDN. I don't know where this comes from. The one we had previously had is the optics denoiser which is quite fantastic anyway. So let's apply this. It's typically uh, a process, a, a post effect on top of the current render which is not suitable for rendering sequences. At least you need to inspect your rendered sequence if it has artifacts from one frame to another. So this is always a problem with post effects. But you see this is quite amazing and it took just 19 seconds, as long as the previous one, but we have no grain. It's just beautiful. And uh, I mean this is a, a little bit over the original re resolution of 1 to 1. We see artifacts here and there, but uh, this is tolerable, I think. Let's get rid of this, remove this denoise imager. We, um, the optics is, has been in Maya for quite a while now. We try the Oiden. And look how fast it goes. It's not finished, it's at 17%. And it's going up to 26 now. It looks a bit too soft, maybe, but uh, you will see the result in a few seconds. I think it's still cleaning up pixels there. And now it's finished. It took 33 seconds, which is quite good. So this is the Oiden Denoiser took 36 seconds, I remove it and now I add the noise denoiser they're all post effects, all the images are post effects the noise denoiser does an odd rendering process we're currently stuck at 26% and I know that it's it will jump to 50 sort of uh, pretty soon but uh, it needs to think about the whole scene. I think it meditates about the whole scene and then it displays a result. Now this is a jump to 50%. But this denoise it does a great job as well. And you have to try out for your rendering of sequences or single images what suits you best. Now you see it's starting to render here and we're still in the middle. 
Let me fast forward this. Ninety-four percent. What an amazing image. One minute and forty-two seconds. All over the place you have quite nice rendering. All these things, for example, when you render a sequence and you see these dots swimming, sort of, uh, you need to change that denoiser. Maybe not use a denoiser at all. By the way, you can add images on top of each other, so you can use the noise and the oidin and the optics and the exposure and lens effects, etc. I think using several denoises on top of each other is not really useful, but you can try it. Now we have two. The strength of the denoiser in 3D programs like Maya or Blender or Cinema 4D or Max is that the 3D software knows exactly where the objects are. That means the pixel arrangement and the anti-aliasing can be applied much better than in a post-process in a different program, like in After Effects. We need to apply these things in order to get a good result, which can then be delivered and refined in a real post-processing program. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.